Some breaking Eagles injury news to get to on this Monday in the aftermath of what was a tremendous win for the Philadelphia Eagles over the Dallas Cowboys yesterday at Lincoln Financial Field. The Birds now going into the bye week with an NFL best 8-1 record, all of the momentum in the world. And of course, anytime you can beat up on the Dallas Cowboys to put Cowboys fans in shambles, it's always a great day. Hope you're all having a great Monday, and how could you not be? Seeing Cowboys fans complaining about the officiating after they were gift-wrapped an opportunity to win this football game at the six-yard line. It is oh so sweet. But coming up on today's show, Dallas Goddard suffering a forearm fracture, going to miss some time. What does this mean for Philadelphia? Who could the Eagles replace Goddard with externally and internally on this Eagles roster? That's all coming up on the show. But make sure you subscribe to the channel because regardless of where I am at the Chat Sports Studios or here at home, anytime breaking news happens, I have you covered here on the program. It's Eagles Now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. So according to Ian Rappaport, the expectation here is that Goddard could undergo surgery as early as today. Today, in the third quarter, caught a pass from Jalen Hurts. It went for 28 yards, and he was ripped down on somewhat of a borderline dirty takedown in the third quarter. He was immediately seen in pain, immediately went into the tunnel, went to the locker room, and was ruled out for the remainder of that game. He's going to get an MRI today to determine if there's any further injury. But after undergoing an x-ray yesterday, it was determined that Goddard has that forearm fracture. A couple of different reports that I want to get to here because it is important to lay the foundation here. Mike Garofolo, NFL Network, who used to work at 94 WIP and because of that always has some quality inside sources with that Eagles organization. He said it was pretty clear leaving the link last night that Goddard would miss some time, but it would not be a season ender. Reminiscent of last year when Goddard missed five games around this time, similar timeline expected with this injury. So Goddard here is a candidate to go on short-term IR. That would mean that Goddard, coming out of the bye week, has to miss at least the next four games. The bye week comes at a good time for Goddard, as well as a player like Jalen Hurts, who even said after the game last night that selfishly, bye week is here at an opportune time because he took that helmet to the knee, he's banged up, re-aggravating that knee injury, and to have the bye week at about the midway point, I think that comes at a quality time for Philadelphia to get right, to get healthy for the back half of this season when the schedule gets really tough, but you're trying to get primed and ready for another run at a potential Super Bowl. So if Goddard is out, for the next four games, this is what the slate looks like. And this is the negative aspect of when this injury happens because this schedule really tough for the Birds. You have a bye week. You're on the road against the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl rematch on the road at Arrowhead Stadium. You come back home to take on the Buffalo Bills at the link. Then you have a rematch of the NFC Championship game as you welcome the San Francisco 49ers to South Philadelphia. And then matchup number two against the Cowboys and Goddard played a pretty big role yesterday in that game against Dallas and has a critical role for this entire Eagles offense because of how he can block in the run and pass game and obviously him being a weapon through the aerial attack as well. Now the other tight ends on the roster right now include Jack Stoll, Grant Calcaterra, and Albert Okwa-Abenam. Grant Calcaterra, who was drafted by this team two years ago, was out against Dallas because of a concussion. And because he was out, Albert Okwa-Abenam, who the Eagles traded for right before the start of the regular season, he was going to get cut by the Denver Broncos. Broncos get some late-round draft compensation back. He made his Eagles debut yesterday. Did not catch any passes, played limited snaps. He is not a good blocker at all. He is best when utilized as a weapon in the pass game. You can line him up in the slot. You can line him up at that normal tight end position, flanked to the right of Lane Johnson or to the left of Jordan Mailata. He is a freak athlete who ran a 4-4 40-yard dash at 250-260 pounds coming out of Mizzou at the NFL Scouting Combine. And at Mizzou, he played with Drew Locke. Very good athlete downfield when utilized in the passing game. 
But the unfortunate aspect of this is Goddard's two-way ability as a blocker and a pass catcher. So if you do put Albert Okwa Ibanam on the field, and surprisingly the Eagles used him in a goal line situation, he was yanked right after that, he's not going to be able to move a lot of bodies. But he can be a little bit of a weapon in the pass game for Jalen Hurts. Catch radius, good athlete rumbling downfield, jump ball guy who can go up and get it. He just fell down the depth chart with Denver over the last couple of years, and then the new coaching staff comes in with Sean Payton. They just wanted to start over. So we could see a little bit more from Okwa Abenom. Grant Calcaterra, also a really good athlete, played at Oklahoma, then SMU, actually retired because of concussion issues. So hopefully those head injuries not causing him any further problems, and Jack Stoll is what he is at this point. The Eagles also signed EJ Jenkins to the practice squad. He played at Clemson, played at Georgia Tech as well, but look, you know, he's not really a guy who's going to move the needle much. So Philadelphia certainly has some decisions to make as far as game planning goes, which tight ends are going to utilize in this offense, or if they want to sign a tight end, externally in free agency. We'll get to that here in a moment. When Goddard missed five games last year with that shoulder injury that he suffered in the Eagles' first loss against the Washington Commanders, the Eagles' offense did dip a little bit. And the Eagles' tight ends, in those five games total, only had 14 catches for 143 yards and a touchdown. The per-game average over those five rounds out to be 2.8 catches per game and 28.6 yards. That's not good, right? And for Goddard, that's why he has such an important role on this Eagles offense. Like You can't replace that production, and last year the Eagles didn't replace that production. And I always believe, and I'm always a proponent of a tight end playing a big role in an offense. I think it opens up a lot. When you have outside wide receivers like A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, arguably the best one-two punch at that wide receiver spot as far as a duo goes in the NFL right now, they're on the outside, and then that opens up the seam balls, some of those routes down the numbers, underneath routes. But sometimes Dallas Goddard can just be utilized as a safety blanket for Jalen Hurts. Quick hitter. He's a menace to bring down in the open field. He can break tackles, but also you can throw a bubble screen, get some of your blockers out in front, and he's able to make a difficult play easy in just picking up some of those yards that can give the offense a little bit of breathing room. And he's a really good player, right? I mean, 38 catches for 410 yards this year with two touchdowns last year, even though he missed five games. 55 catches for 702 yards and three touchdowns. He was so good in the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. That fourth down catch that he had on the Eagles opening drive yesterday, a dime from Hertz to drop it in the bucket there, but good job by Goddard. Toe drag swag along that sideline to keep that possession going to put seven points on the board with that fourth down conversion. So very critical to the run game and the pass game whenever he's included in the game plan because to start the year, wasn't involved in the pass game. Then he started to become a little bit more involved in the pass game and the complexion of this Eagles offense changed because of it. I will say this, that last year when Goddard was out, while the production From the Eagles' tight ends was minimal, those 2.8 catches per game, 28.6 yards. Devontae Smith did skyrocket with his production. He averaged five catches for 84 yards per game in Dallas Goddard's absence and had a couple of touchdowns there. So that's kind of the outlook for the Eagles moving forward. As for external Dallas Goddard replacements, at this point of the NFL season, When you're in week nine going into week 10, there are not a lot of good tight ends available. And for the Eagles, there is a pretty big drop off when you go from Goddard to Stoll, Calcaterra, and Albert Okwa Abenam, who I covered in high school. So I have some insight on how Albert O plays. But the Eagles could look to a guy like Dan Arnold, who was with this team in the preseason, but he's been an NFL journeyman for a reason. He's kind of a glue guy at that tight end spot. He can block, but he's not really a good pass catcher downfield, and there's a reason why he's been with a few teams, Arizona Cardinals, Jacksonville Jaguars, Philadelphia Eagles. 
there's also a lot of chatter right now on social media from sports talk radio hosts in the Philadelphia market to a lot of Eagles fans who are saying, Howie Roseman's always aggressive. He's always looking to upgrade this roster. Rob Gronkowski has hinted at maybe coming back at some point during a stretch run to be an impact player for a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. Gronk has been complimentary of the Philadelphia Eagles in the past, and that's why there's a lot of conversation about Rob Gronkowski. But you got to be real about this, right? What type of impact are you expecting from Gronk? And how long is Goddard going to be out to make the Gronk signing even worth it? Gronk is 34 years old right now. He last played in 2021 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, won the Super Bowl in 2020 after coming out of retirement, missing the 2019 season. So he spent the following two years with Tom Brady and the Bucs. In 2021, 12 games, 55 catches, 810 yards, and six touchdowns. That production is really good. In 2020, when the Bucs won the Super Bowl during that COVID year, he was also very, very good. But we're a few years removed from that. Now, obviously, if you were to sign Gronk to this roster, you're not really expecting him to do much. And yeah, he might be 34 years old, hasn't played since 2021. But is he going to be better than a Jack Stoll, Grant Calcaterra, and an Albert Oko Abenam? Maybe. But also at the same time, Gronk's been on the set at Fox Sports, and he's lost some weight. So is he even in football shape? He's talked about preparing to play flag football in the Olympics in a couple of years. He's talked about maybe playing international basketball. I saw some clips of him hooping, but international basketball, a lot different than NFL football. So he's trimmed down a little bit. Can the body even hold up at the NFL level? Hey, if there's a rumor out there, if there's some buzz about Gronk, we're going to continue to cover it here. I will say this, there's no more Philly athlete as far as personality goes, brash, boldness, swagger, confidence, being willing to speak your mind, than Rob Gronkowski. The idea is fun. I just don't think it's realistic, but wanted to hit on that because a lot of people are talking about that on social media this morning as a big talking point in the aftermath of this Goddard injury. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I will be back later today to kind of recap all the latest Eagles news and analysis from that great win over the Dallas Cowboys. And I have some words later for Cowboys fans who are trying to blame the officiating. Are the officials to blame when the Cowboys were gift-wrapped an opportunity to win this game when penalties got them down to the six, and then they had two penalties and a sack and then a fumble to end the ball game? Classic Cowboys fan behavior. Make sure you subscribe, especially if you hate Dallas. I'll be back a little bit later. Thanks for watching. Hope you're all having a good Monday morning.